The reciprocating saws, variable RPM, interchangeable blades, and ergonomic design make it one of the most versatile tools in the shed. As most saws have a rotating blade, let's take a look to see how this reciprocating saw works through 3D animation. The outside of the saw, the housing, is made of hard plastic. It contains the stresses from the mechanical system within the saw and allows the user to grip and manipulate the saw. It's made of two halves and is held together by screws. Once these screws are taken out, we can now see the internal workings of the saw. The saw has an intriguing balance of electrical and mechanical parts, all working together. Let's plug it in and see how it works. This saw model is 110 volts and 12 amps, so you can plug it into any wall outlet. Once plugged in, the electricity flows through the wire into the inlet on the saw. You can see here how within the saw, the wires are divided into three separate wires. These three wires run right into the trigger switch. When the button is pressed, the current then flows to the motor. The flow of electricity is transferred to the commutator through the brushes that you can see here. The brushes are curved to maintain a proper continuous connection to the commutator during operation. The current then flows to the armature, which is the green and grey object you can see here. As the armature gets charged from the brushes, its magnetic field acts on the stator, which is a permanent magnet shown here. The relationship between the armature and the stator produce a torque which runs the saw. At the end of the motor, there are a set of cooling fins that run air over the motor to ensure it does not overheat. At the end of the motor assembly is the output shaft with a metal gear with 10 teeth. The saw now has a variable rotational motion provided by the motor. This needs to be transformed into rectilinear motion to make the saw work. This is done by the next component the wobble plate assembly. As the motor turns clockwise, the wobble plate assembly turns counterclockwise and at one-fifth the speed over its 50 teeth. This, in return, increases the torque of the wobble plate. Now let's take a closer look to see how the wobble plate works. The wobble plate assembly uses a simple pushing force on the wobble plate throughout each revolution to transform rotational energy into rectilinear motion. The angle of the groove in the cylinder makes the top of the cylinder longer than the bottom side. As the cylinder rotates, the shorter side begins to turn into the longer side. This creates a force demonstrated by the red arrow. This force is also occurring on the opposite side of the groove, acting in the opposite direction. This pushes the wobble plate back and forth through each revolution. As the wobble plate goes through each revolution, it pitches up and down from its oscillating effect. You can see this through the arc in the red line. The wobble plate also rotates about the z-axis demonstrated by the red arrows shown here. This is unwanted movement as the saw blade needs to only translate back and forth. The unwanted movements are absorbed by this pin. The wobble plate is able to rotate on its z-axis and pitch within the pin. The pin absorbs these movements and only conveys the rectilinear motion of the wobble plate to the output shaft. The blades are then connected to the end of the output shaft. The saw blades can also easily be swapped out depending on the job. This design gives the saw a blade stroke length of 1 and 1 8th of an inch. And that's the fundamental principle of how a reciprocating saw works.